Today I will be sharing with you my second graders homeschool curriculum. My name is Alicia, I am a mom of four. My children are ages nine, seven, seven, and three. My nine-year-old and three-year-old are actually about to age up in just two months. They are super excited and I am slightly indifferent. It's always a little bittersweet as they get older. So we got a lot to cover. So I'm gonna get started pretty quickly. First, let me do the normal subscribe to Moms of Truth if you haven't yet. I post homeschool videos every single Wednesday, a lot of look inside the books, some curriculum picks, and soon to be other homeschool topics and fun stuff. Every Monday, I also post Christian content for moms specifically, and right now I am doing a summer book review series. Some of those books include The Love Dare for Parents, Gospel Centered Mom, Family Discipleship by Matt Chandler, and more. You can find those specific videos under the playlist titled Christian Book Reviews, and it's also linked above for you. Okay, so on to the curriculum. This is my second year at this, so some of our picks we did last year and loved them. Some of them are new and we haven't quite walk, walked through them yet. Feel free to comment below with your favorites or ones that you maybe want to give a try. I have a lot to show you today, so I am going to go a little bit fast, but I will work on making a flip through video of each one of these books that I show you today. First up is Skill Sharpeners Critical Thinking connecting school and home. So I picked this up to be part of their morning work um, to get their brains going. I have found that my children are quick to give up and get frustrated as soon as they come across something even slightly challenging. So I thought that a critical thinking book would kind of help them with that. The topics that are covered are everything from animals, body, things and places, so there is a lot of science in this book, which my kids love learning about. It has reading activities, coloring, critical thinking, and of course, arts and crafts. Here's a sample of the reading. And then it also has um, uh, cutouts for the crafts in the book. I especially love the checklist, which are set up to do one page a day which my kids do really well with this system because it encourages them by being able to do something and then check it off as accomplished and done. Okay, and then for math, we are doing the same thing that we did last year because it really worked well with my kids and that is master books, lessons for a living education level two. I will have a look inside the book of this, so please subscribe and be sure to look out for this one. This is a Charlotte Mason style of learning, and it is Christian content, so they do have Bible teaching in there as well. My kids especially loved it because the story is about boy-girl twins in this book, and the characters actually don't change when they go up to the next level. It's still the same twins, and they get to read about them as they grow and as my kids grow. So they find the twins to be very relatable, and it's just the cutest thing. I love the pace of this book. It is a bit slower. It's very repetitive. It's not intense or intimidating. It's just nice and easy. For math concepts especially, I prefer it that way because I want to make sure that those foundations are built and are solid. It also has some manipulatives in the back of the book that you can laminate and utilize throughout the whole school year. Another master books pick is my story and the world around me. This is for their social studies, geography, economics, and politics. It's kind of like an all-in-one. It is from Masterbooks, so again, it is a Christian curriculum with Bible teaching sprinkled throughout it. This one is actually recommended for grades one and two. We started it last year for first grade, and we've been working through it slowly. Okay. It has a pretty good amount of reading for each week. So we normally do popcorn reading, 
It has talk time with prompted questions to have discussion. It has hands-on activity time, which sometimes is just critical thinking. Sometimes it's coloring. Um, they also have picture studies and language where they get to learn how to say something in a different language based off whatever country you are currently learning about. I do love all of the pictures. Uh, they really help my children understand and reinforce what they are reading. But to be honest, I do feel as though something is missing from this book. They are learning through a lot in this book. And the reason we have taken it so slow is because I have found myself actually looking for additional activities to help the content really stick because of the sheer amount of stuff that they're learning. I will let you see for yourself with a look inside the book of this one in the very near future. For handwriting, we are doing the good and the beautiful. Level three is recommended for grades uh, second and third. We're doing level three because it has cursive and my kiddos are ready and eager to learn that. Uh, this has 100 workbook pages exactly. So we are just gonna do one page a day. And then when we finish, we will know that it is our 100th day of school. So that's pretty cool because I definitely dropped the ball on that last year. The spiral makes it easy for them to be able to write in. Um, and it not only has instructions on how to write the letters, but also has fun activities like mazes, drawing, scripture copy, um, connect the dot, and coloring. So it's not really just handwriting. It throws in a few fun things to mix it up for the kids. And I've looked at a lot of handwriting books, and this one is by far my favorite. And then for spelling, I actually don't do a curriculum book because our system uh, that we do just works better for us. We simply just go down the Fry spelling word list and I'll link that below for you. And then we take that list and we just do different activities like writing them three times each in a different color or a different style, chalk in the driveway, making words out of Play-Doh, hopscotch spelling, magnetic letters, all kinds of stuff. The kids just kind of get creative with it. And my boys who struggle with memory, we revisit the words as much as needed. And then we do a spelling test every Friday. They have 10 spelling words on index cards. And after they take their test, they'll take two of those out and replace them with two new ones. This system has worked pretty well for us, so I don't look to be changing it. For ELA, Last year we did master books, but it didn't really work for my kiddos. So we are trying something new this year. I did not choose an all in one curriculum. I kind of pieced it together on my own. So bear with me as I go through it all. For phonics, I've talked about this before, um, but we're doing explode the code along with manipulatives and games. My kids love both the simplicity and the repetition of this book. They do two pages a day and it only takes them a couple of minutes. Explode the Code does a great job of covering all things phonics in a progressive order. Um, this is my older son's workbook. My first graders are actually finishing up um, level two and this summer they're gonna be doing two and a half, and then in the fall, they'll be moving on to this one. You can actually take a placement assessment at explodethecode.com to see where you should start off with your kids. Okay, and then we have these little correct the sentence daily journals, and they were only about $3. Um, I got these and the next few items that I'm showing you at Lakeshore learning store. I will link that below. We have one here locally and it is a huge teacher store if you've never heard of it. It is amazing. My husband hates when I go there. <laughs> this book has a proofreading marks chart on the back cover which is just golden for me and for my kids and then they just correct one sentence a day. It is simple, quick, and this is something that my children really need for their own writing. I am actually going to have them use a red pen to make their corrections and then have them rewrite it below correctly. And then of course in the back is an answer key. Next we have paragraph of the week and it rotates out the type of writing for you. 
from opinion to explanatory, narr narrative, and informative. So it all gets covered. One less thing for me to have to balance and track. What I love is that they don't have to do all of the writing in one day. You can see that it starts with uh, brainstorming and then filling in the details and then moving on to the topic and conclusion and then putting it all together and then lastly sharing it. I love this breakdown because it's not overwhelming and they can just focus on one part of their writing at a time. And this book was only $4, a total win. Also for writing, we have a, a writing prompts journal, which we will either be rotating um, these out by week or doing one and then the other. I haven't really decided just yet. So this one is for first and second grade. Um, so the setup is a little bit different. The focus is not on necessarily forming a paragraph, but just helping them to think about including details in their writing. You can see on the pages that it gives them a prompt to write about and then either gives them a word bank or a space to make a list. brainstorm or questions to answer in their writing. This book I feel really prepares them to start writing paragraphs. So maybe this book should come before this book, but we'll see. Also from Lakeshore Learning Store, we have daily reading comprehensions, grades one through one and two. It is also set up daily, just like the other book that I showed you. And it is also only $4. And by the way, all of these books are aligned with state standards, which for me personally is a huge comfort. So day one is a quick reading and then a quick activity. And then another activity for every other day of the week. And Friday will always have a short writing prompt about the story. Again, I love how it is broken up. It will only take them a couple of minutes each day, which really helps my children to not get discouraged or frustrated. All of these books I'm super excited about. Then for vocabulary, we have Worldly Wise, along with the test booklet and the answer key, which I cannot live without. Having four littles, it just really makes the checking process quicker and more efficient. So in this one, they will learn, so for this one, they will learn about 10 words each week and each lesson has six activities followed by a quiz. Um, we do this every other day or so. Um, we really just kind of break the lessons up and take our time because I want, I really just want to make sure that we aren't rushing it and are just focusing on learning the words, the definitions, how to use them in our daily conversations. So there are 15 total lessons. So doing one for every two weeks works out perfect for our school year. I highly recommend these books for vocabulary. And then for grammar, we are actually going to continue working out of our grammar spiral notebooks. I purchased a grammar interactive activity set from educationtothecore.com. It was about $35, but it covered all things grammar from grades K through three, and I forgot to bring it down to you, I'm so sorry. This is a resource that all of my kids have been able to use to not only learn from, but to refer back to. And even though my oldest is going into fourth grade, he still uses his grammar notebook often. It's basically just a spiral notebook with all of these activities inside that they put together. It This is everything that is covered in the printable. All the activities are different, which makes it fun for the kids. It is a hands-on activity notebook. And honestly, at first I was a little hesitant with the price. This little grammar notebook has proven to be far worth it and a resource that we use often daily in our classroom. And lastly, just to be sure that I have all my ELA bases covered, I grabbed this Language Arts from Spectrum on Amazon for $12. Um, here is a list of what it covers, and of course it correlates with the state standards. With this book, I will just kind of pick and choose along the way to kind of gauge and test to be sure that my kids are on track since I pieced together their curriculum for this subject. 
There's really nothing fun or special about this book. It's just a standard work workbook. Again, just for me to be able to double check that they are on track. For science, I am using Life Pack Curriculum Set. I was actually going to go with Master Books for Science, but I got this for free from a neighbor, so I thought, why not? It's free and it's a Christian curriculum. And especially for science, that is really just kind of a must for our family. So this comes with all of the workbooks, the teacher's guide. This particular set is actually missing um, the first two units, which cover living and non-living things, and then plants, which I'm really not too concerned about. So in the, the workbooks, the font is a good size for the age that my children are at. The activities are pretty simple, not complicated at all. This is going to be a really easy study for us. It also in the book has word studies, which is really important for science. And then it does also have prompted experiments, but it doesn't look like it has too many experiments. So we will likely be adding some STEM for science as well. And then next year, I probably am going to go with something a little bit different. For music, art, and PE, I am actually going to make a separate video for you. So the last thing that I'm going to be showing you for today is what I am most excited about. It is our Bible curriculum. We are doing elementary apologetics. The Answers Books for Kids box set by Ken Ham. Now this was a bit pricey, but we didn't have a formal curriculum last year, and I really, really wanted to invest in that this year. So this is a master books curriculum, and you can find it at christianbook.com. The set that I have here is about $80, but let me tell you, it is going to be so worth it. Our kids have questions about their faith and good questions. I want to be able to answer all of those things for them, but honestly, I don't have all of the answers. So this will equip us to be able to explore together as a family. Now it says grades four through six, but I am doing this with my second graders also because they're ready. It is set up to be done in one year, but we're gonna take our time. And I want to leave room for them to really seek and get curious, spending more time digging into a topic if that's where they are. The workbook is pretty simple. You do the assigned reading from the book and then answer the questions and then look up some scripture to reinforce what you are learning. Then at the end of each volume that you finish, there are suggested activities and it's really nothing that requires a bunch of supplies. It's more like write a thank you letter, say a prayer, draw a picture, do something kind, um, things like that. Since I have more than one kid going through this, I'm actually going to have them get a notebook to answer the questions. They'll, they'll copy over the question and then write the answer. And it'll be a great reference for them to keep and to look back on as they grow up in age. So I am going to show you inside one of these books so that you can see a few of the different questions that are asked. And I am going to start with volume eight, <laughs> the last volume. It is questions about Satan and angels because we're all curious about that, aren't we? So let's look in and see what some of the questions are. What do angels do besides singing? If Satan was an angel and turned bad, does that mean there are other bad angels? Why did God create the devil when he knew that he would turn against him and against his people? As you can see, there are some really good questions in here and my kids are dying to get started and so am I. So that is our core curriculum picks for the second grade for the 2021-22 school year. I will be making some look in the book videos. So go ahead and comment below with which one you want to see from what I showed you today. And I will be sure to get that up for you as soon as possible. If you are interested in Christian parenting content, please be sure to check out our playlist titled Godly Parenting and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.